Hey everybody. When you hear or see the words in-ear monitors, you might think of inexpensive earbuds, or you might think of the much more expensive custom-made headphones musicians wear. IEMs or in-ear monitors vary widely in both quality and price. They're smaller for better portability, and they tend to offer better sound isolation without the need for active noise cancelling technology. However, the soundstage might also be smaller due to the smaller form factor, especially when compared to larger over-ear headphones. Today I'll be talking about these Basin MT Pro 14.5mm planar in-ear monitors. What's in the box, how they feel, and how they sound. Welcome to the middle of nowhere. Before I begin, disclaimer time. I received an email from Basin to do a review for one of their models of in-ear monitors, and I agreed. While they sent me the MT Pros for free, I have not been paid to make this video, and Basin does not get to see the video prior to me pushing it live to YouTube. All thoughts on the Basin MT Pro in-ear monitors conveyed in this video are my own and have been influenced only by my experience. Now on to the unboxing. The MT Pros come in a black box covered by a white cardboard slipcase. On the front is the company logo, IEM model name, some quick specs such as size and an image of the headphones, and on the back are more technical details and a paragraph espousing the MT Pros benefits. Removing the slipcase cover reveals the Basin logo and on the back is a QR code which takes you to the Basin website. The box is magnetically sealed which is a nice premium touch and when you open it you'll see a semi-transparent piece of paper with metallic print telling you to enjoy your music with Basin IEMs. Under the sheet are the two in-ear monitors tucked safely into soft foam padding and a carrying case for all the headphones included accessories. The in-ear monitors come with one pair of silicone ear tips pre-installed. Should you want to buy the MT Pros, you'll be able to choose from different colors. Rich black, champagne gold, cool silver, navy blue, and deep purple, which is what I have. The monitor housings are made from an aluminum alloy which has been CNC manufactured, and both are marked with an either an R or an L, so you know which ear they go into. The accessory case has a metal construction and looks and feels very premium. Upon unlatching it, you're greeted with a slew of goodies held in three available pouches and two loops. Inside you get one OCC single crystal copper cable, one inline mic cable, three pairs of memory foam ear tips, nine pairs of silicone ear tips, a quarter inch audio adapter, a cleaning tool to get any schmutz out of the connectors and ear tips, a clip to secure the cable to your clothing to keep the mic from rubbing against your clothes, or to keep the cable from flailing about as you rock out, one wire pullout clamp, which I'll go over in more detail later, and finally a user manual and a guide that tells you how to use the wire pullout clamp. Regarding the user manual and wire pullout clamp card, they are in color, but the text could be a bit larger to make it easier to read. Topics the manual covers include how to install the ear tips, how to connect the cables, how to prolong the life of your bass and headphones, and warranty information. What the user manual doesn't provide is information on how to use the inline cable, which has a mic for taking calls, volume controls, and can more than likely be used to play, pause, forward, and reverse tracks on your phone or music device. Basin, if you're not going to include instructions in the manual, you need to make them available on your website, which at the time of this video, they are not. Additionally, one error the manual makes is stating you can identify the left or right side of a cable with a blue or red mark on it. While there are no such marks, each cable does have an L or an R on the side, which is good. All in all, these little absences or errors are minor, but they add up and make for both a subpar first impression and experience. And Basin definitely ought to fix them. One of the easiest ways to do this is to provide PDFs of the manuals and other documentation on the product webpage. These can be updated when errors are found and also expanded when missing information is discovered and pointed out. Moving on from the unboxing, here are the technical specs for the Basin MT Pro headphones. They have a frequency range of 20 to 20,000 hertz, a sensitivity of 102 decibels or 1 kilohertz, an impedance of 32 ohms at 1 kilohertz, and the speakers are 14 0.5 millimeter planar magnetic drivers. If you don't know, planar magnetic drivers use a thin, lightweight diaphragm with a conductive layer placed between powerful magnets. When an electrical signal flows through the conductive layer, it interacts with the magnetic field, causing the diaphragm to move and produce sound. By contrast, dynamic drivers work by using a diaphragm attached to a coil of wire, which moves back and forth within a magnetic field created by a permanent magnet. When an electrical signal passes through the coil, it causes the diaphragm to vibrate, producing sound waves that we hear as audio. As for the cables, you'll get two with the MT Pros. Both are braided, have a 3.5 millimeter jack, and both are 4.9 feet or 1.5 meters long. Both also use the MMCX connector, which is essentially a teeny tiny coaxial cable, so be careful Careful when connecting or removing them from the headphones. The inline cable is silver with a right angle four pole jack, 
while the other cable has a clear rubber coating on it, allowing you to see the copper underneath. It has a straight three pole jack and it is made from OCC copper. Because I didn't know what OCC meant, I did some research. According to LQI Cables, OCC, or Ono Continuous Cast, is an industrial process that produces a sonically superior wire by eliminating grain boundaries, impurities, and oxygen. The resulting single crystal of silver or copper provides a high bandwidth path for signal transfer. LQI also mentions on the same webpage these kind of cables require a 50-hour burn-in period. And seeing as how audio burn-in is also a hot topic of debate amongst audiophiles, I'd take any OCC designation with a grain of salt, and I don't think that I personally would pay extra for it. Marketing gimmick aside, I do like the designs of both cables. Regarding the inline cable, after some time playing with it, I was able to figure out what the buttons do. The plus and minus buttons adjust volume, which is easy enough to figure out. Depending on how many presses you make, the middle button does the following. One press plays and pauses music, two rapid presses forwards a track, and three rapid presses goes back a track. Do note, if enough time has passed, this will actually restart the current track instead of going back to the previous one, so you might have to do it a couple of times. For calls, one press of the middle button answers the call, and when finished, one press hangs up. While the controls were easy to figure out on my own, I still want instructions for them printed in the manual or available on the Basin website. Having to discover what they do on my own wasn't the end of the world, but it was still an inconvenience. Connecting the in-ear headphones to the cables is easy as a snap, but it is a bit intimidating as you have to be careful not to break anything. Because the MMCX connector is essentially a little coaxial cable, there's a pin and a hole you have to align. The best way to connect the cable to the headphone is to make sure you match the left monitor to the left cable and right monitor to the right cable, then line up the cable to be perpendicular to the headphone and push until you hear a snap. There's no need to screw the cable to tighten it. To remove the headphone, use the included wire pullout clamp. You want to position the clamp at the monitor base and then squeeze to separate the cable from it. You can choose to do this by hand, but I like removing the cable with the provided tool. Finally, you get a slew of ear tips with the MT Pros. As all ears aren't created equal, Basin has included three sizes of ear tips for users made from two kinds of materials. There are nine pairs of silicon ear tips and three pairs made from memory foam. According to the manual, here's what each type of ear tip is best suited for. The round silicone ear tips are the most durable, the double and triple layer ear tips are best for noise reduction, and finally, the memory foam ear tips are best for comfort. The manual also has cleaning tips and instructions on how to change the ear tips, so definitely refer to that if you need. That's pretty much it for what's in the box. You do get a lot with the MT Pros, but the real question is, how do they sound? With a snap of my fingers, let me fast forward to a week from now where I've had some time to experience these IEMs. The crux of any headphone review is how they sound, and during my time using the MT Pros, I listened to a variety of music, and I also used them to see how they sounded when I was on a phone call, in a meeting, and hanging with my friends on Discord and gaming. Using the MT Pros to take calls was fine. I connected the IEMs to my iPhone 11 using the inline cable and called my wife. She said the audio clarity from the mic was clear, and she sounded good on my end as well. There was no static or pops at all. For work meetings, I use the MT Pros on my work laptop, voices came through no problem, and the same can be said for when I use the headphones while playing Elder Scrolls Online and chatting with my friends in Discord. While clarity wasn't an issue, it did feel like people's voices were coming from a small room instead of being expansive, and this speaks to the MT Pros' smaller soundstage, which was also noticeable when listening to music. Additionally, the lower bass heavy sound effects during my time gaming weren't as strong as I'd have liked either. The bass just wasn't as impactful or as expansive as I'm used to when using my over-ear headphones. Moving on to my music listening experience, I wanted to listen to a wide variety of music genres and artists to get a well-rounded feel for how the MT Pro sounded. I listened to songs by Aphex Twin, Autiker, Orbital, Jimi Hendrix, The Beatles, Nine Inch Nails, Alexi Murdoch, Tool, and Beethoven. I think if I were to provide an overall word or words to how my listening experience went, it would be precise and intimate. Again, I think this is due to the soundstage on the MT Pros being fairly small. For some, this might dissuade you from looking into the MT Pros, but for me, it was alright. When it comes to overall sound, the highs and mids are very good, but the MT Pros' weakness are the lows. The bass, while decent, was either not enough or in some cases muffled or muddy sounding, and depending on the song, it was not as impactful as I wanted it to be. The actual word that came to mind while listening to music was fog-like. Having said that, this didn't keep me from pushing on and listening to and enjoying my music selections. Listening to Orbital's One Perfect Sunrise from their Blue Album was like being in a dream. Jimi Hendrix's One Rainy Wish from Axis Bold as Love was great, but sounded confined as if it was coming from a small space, 
and didn't seem to work for me as a listener. By contrast, this smaller soundstage was fantastic for Rainy Day Dream Away from Electric Ladyland, as this song is presented like it's in a small dingy blues bar with a very small audience chiming in from time to time. Tool's Fear Inoculum off the album with the same name was super clear and precise, however it didn't feel or sound as epic or as grand as it should have. As for sound isolation, I used the double layer ear tips and found the empty pros did a fantastic job at blocking outside noise while listening to music. During my snap test, where I snapped my fingers all around my head, I could barely hear the snaps, and when my son or wife tried talking to me, I couldn't hear a word they said. In fact, I didn't even realize they were trying to get my intention until they came and tapped me on the shoulder. So what's my final verdict? Overall, the MT Pros do sound very good. They are precise, and I had a fun time listening to music while using them. Vocals are clear, each instrument and sound can easily be heard, and it was truly a joy to relax and listen to songs I haven't heard in a while. If you don't mind the smaller soundstage or bass that, while present, isn't as booming or as deep and cavernous as you might want, you'll definitely enjoy listening to the music on these IEMs. Having said that, I don't think these would be the headphones to choose if you're taking a day to just chill and listen to music. If I was doing that, I'd definitely choose some good over-ear cans. However, if you're on the go, or somewhere where IEMs are more convenient, or just don't like larger headphones, then definitely the Basin MT Pros are IEMs to consider for your next purchase. Regarding comfort, the Bass and MT Pros fit my ears nicely and were comfortable during a non-stop 4-hour use session until around the end of the 4th hour, when my ears started hurting a little. Prior to that, I barely noticed them. They also became itchy as well though at that end. And this could be a silicone irritation, so if you're allergic to that material, definitely avoid those ear tips and try the memory foam instead. To see if I could alleviate the pain, I swapped the medium ear tips for the smalls and I was able to avoid the pain for a bit longer, by maybe an additional 2 hours or so. Also, because I'm not used to headphone cables looping over my ears, it did take a little bit to get used to this, but it didn't cause any discomfort or irritation. Overall, I give the MT Pros a solid A when it comes to comfort, especially since I can adjust the ear tip sizes to find the perfect fit, or use the foam ones for a different material should the silicone ones keep making my ears itch. Finally, let's talk price. The MT Pros normally retail for $219.99, but you can easily find them available on Amazon for $189.99. This price puts them in the upper middle range of the low end price tier. While not many people, including myself, consider $190 low or cheap, in-ear monitor prices span the spectrum of super affordable at $30 all the way up to the ludicrously expensive $3600. At its current Amazon price, the MT Pros are competitively positioned and come within $10 to $50 of in-ear monitor offerings from other companies like Sennheiser, Shure, and Feo. Speaking of other companies, I'd love to hear about your experience. If you've used similarly priced IEMs from other brands, and even the MT Pros. Let me know in the comments which ones you've used, how they compare to the MT Pros, and what you look for in IEMs altogether. Overall, my short time using the MT Pros has been positive. They're comfortable, sound great, come with a ton of accessories, and they are competitively priced with other IEMs in their price category. Basin provides a load of ear tips to get the most comfort out of your listening experience, and because the cables aren't permanently affixed, you can order new cables should they break or if you want to get different or better ones. Accessories aside, the sound these IEMs produce, while found wanting in the bass department, is still amazing and makes them worth looking at in my eyes, or rather my ears. Finally, I'll leave you with this. Have you ever had a song come on while in your car or at home and when it did you just had to crank that volume up to 11 and enjoy the energy it gave you? That's the feeling I had when listening to nearly every song while using the Basin MT Pros. I know music and sound is one of the most subjective topics there is, but as far as my experience went, these inner monitors had me feeling like I was listening to some of these songs for the very first time again, and it was great. And that's all I have to say about the Basin MT Pro Hi-Fi inner monitors. What are your thoughts on these headphones? Do you like the variety of color options? Are the included accessories a nice bonus? And are there any you'd like to see that weren't included? Are the MT Pros competitively priced or too expensive? What brand and model of IEMs would you suggest over these? If you're a musician or a lover of music, what do you look for in IEMs? Leave a comment down below letting me know. Finally, if you're interested in the MT Pros, I've left a link to them in this, and some other IEMs in the description. Thanks for watching everybody. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, hit that like button and share any questions or comments you might have. Show your support for the channel by getting subscribed and don't forget to turn on that notification button so you don't miss out on any future content. And hey, while you're here, why not check out some of the other videos I've made. I'm Seth, and I'll see you next time in the middle of nowhere.